Hello and welcome to today's video. Today's video we're gonna show you how to set up a radius server with the NPS role on it. Okay, network protection. Network policy, sorry. Okay. Um all we need to do is basically you can install this if you just have one box in your Active Directory server with that VPN role already there, and then add this role too. Otherwise, based on your security setup, you can have this on a separate server, and that's one option. Another option is have it on the remote dial-in server, like your VPN server. Okay, it just makes connections a little bit easier that way, but we're having this on a separate server over here. Okay, whichever method you choose, literally what we're doing, 99.99% is the same. Okay, so just add roles and features. Click next. Role, next. Okay, and then we're click clicking on network policy access. Add feature. Click next. Click Next, next, click install. Okay, once the install is finished, okay, yeah, I'll just clean it up for tidiness. Okay, all you need to do is go to Network Policy Server. That will open up this window. In server 2016, you have this complete, literally, automatic configuration system where you just type in a little bit. But what we will do, we'll go to this way because it's the quick way, and then we'll show you what you would have needed to have manually configured on that side. Okay. Let's just click on that. That's fine. Good. All right. Configure. Give it a name, it's a VPN connection, you can go with that, the automatic name, or give it a down. We are now creating a radius client. Okay, give it a friendly name, VPN radius, okay. The IP address is, you might think, the client is talking about this computer. No. It's actually asking for where there is a web service running or your VPN service, etc. Okay, we'll just type in the IP address as we know that. We could also type in the full name if we wanted to. Okay, click verify. Resolve, finds it, all good. If we had set up a shared secret template, that would be fine. What a shared secret template, I mean, what a shared secret is, it's basically kind of like, shall we say, a password on this computer and also on the other computer that is joining up to this Radius server. And that's it. We suggest you use the generate because you get a huge thing. You would want to copy this down because there's no way you're going to memorize that. For this instance, what we're going to do is just create a manual one in case it asks us to type in the manual one. And that will be later on. Okay, so we're just going to create something simple that confirm, conforms to... Policies. Okay. Click. Okay. That's been added. Okay. We are going to add in EAP. That makes everything a lot easier, a lot more secure. And that's it. Microsoft protected EAP. Oops. The last one more secure one. Configure if you want how many connection attempts, that's fine. You can also add in the other 
ones we suggest at most you stick with that one. Then now, what you would have needed to have done is basically on your Active Directory computer created a security group and within that security group you then add your users and this is what the benefit of using this NPS radius system actually is. It's fairly similar to file and folder permissions, access permissions, where you can limit those to certain groups, etc. Okay, you can filter based on certain criteria. In this, you can filter based on which group they're part of, what IP address they are, the connection method, all those things. So we have already set one up on our Active Directory computer. We're just going to check the name. That's it. It finds it. All good. Click Next. You can create some IP filters if you do want to. We're going to go with the highest encryption. Click Next. Realm name is not really needed, but you can type it in if you want to. And we're literally finished. Before we go on to our VPN server, we're just actually going to quickly show you how that group needs to be set up. Okay, we open up Server Manager and then we just clicked on Active Directory Users and Computers. And within our domain, we basically created our own organizational unit. You don't really need to do that. You could literally just click on here and then New and then basically Group. It would be a security group, global, give it a name, and then just like what we've done, we've created an organizational unit, we created that security group, and then we have a user that has dial-in access and is a member of that group. Okay, these are the only things you need to have within Active Directory users and computers. Okay, so now we'll move on to our VPN server and show you how to configure it over there. On our VPN server, we basically click over here, click on Server Manager, and then that opens up there. Go to Tools, click on Remote Routing and Remote Access. We can close that down. And over here, we click on Properties. And how do we ensure that we're actually using Radius? As you can see, it's automatically chosen that. We are actually, well, we added it before, but we'll just show you how to do that. Let's remove that. Okay, let's add the server name was server2016. Okay, let's just go over there. The secret. Click OK. Always use Message Authenticator. If you're using EAP, basically that's not really required, but for some of the older ones, yes. OK, click OK. That'll do a little bit of checking to make sure it's all good. Hopefully it is. We'll click on OK. And now we should just quickly go to our VPN's user's computer. OK where the Windows 10 computer that wants to connect up to our VPN and show you that it should work. And here we are in our Windows 10. If you want to see how we set up our VPN server and also the client and VPN certificates, etc., Please look at our previous two videos. The link should be in the description. So all you need to do just to test 
it's all working is it goes through. The first time you ever connect it will do a little bit of extra kind of like um, checking going backwards from this computer to the VPN server, from the VPN server to the radius server, radius server to Active Directory, all verify, passes forward, all OK, and then it allows connection. Now that we've done this, let's go back to our NPS server and actually talk through the different things and the manual method. OK. So, we use this automatic configuration system. Basically, if you were doing it, you need to work your way down this list manually. So basically, what you would do is come over here and then create a new Radius client, give it a friendly name just like we gave over here, VPN Radius, the IP address of that VPN server or that HTTP server of yours. Okay, then shared secret manual or generate the complex one. Okay, advance. You can access request messages must contain the message authenticator attribute, just like we had said. If you're using the EAP, it's not really required. However, you can tick that. That's fine. So, sorry, my mistake, because I'm just showing you as a demo. Basically, this is what you would do if it's new. And that's exactly what happened over here. Okay, we'll just click that. And then a remote radius server groups. If we had one, we would add that in. Policies, okay, this is basically where we have use Windows authentication. Let's just disable that one. This is the one that was automatically configured, okay, and it basically was configured to use a NAS port. What we shall show you is just go to properties. How it looks is if you click new, you would go through the whole thing. Whoops. Okay. Give the policy name, click policy is enabled, make sure it's VPN. And then conditions would be a NAS port. How do you get there? It's just add, scroll all the way down, NAS port. And then you click add, and then make sure it's VPN. Click OK. And that's pretty much it. So that sorts that side out. Authentication methods, everything is automatic. Authentication using the requests of this server, that's fine. Accounting, basically, if you want to create log files with information, you can create that. Okay. Realm name, just like in the, the auto configuration, we didn't use a realm name, so that was fine. Radius attributes, nothing required. Vendor specific, also nothing required. Okay, so I'm just going to cancel that. So that's shown you the first thing. You need to set up that NAS, okay, VPN. Okay, network policies. I'll just disable these two. Uh, disable. These, you can have them enabled, disable. This is the one that we automatically configured. And basically, this one is where it used the NAS port that we created previously and our user group, our security group in Active Directory. Okay, let's click on properties. This is what you would do, policy name, okay, click policy enabled, grant access, okay, Ignore user account dial in properties. Fine. Okay. Make sure it's VPN. Conditions. As you can see, we have added in basically a user group. Click add. 
and then add group and it was exactly like how the automatic system is type in the group name that you create with the users in it okay we'll just cancel that then any constraints we chose to have EAP okay so that's there I wouldn't go too far down at most of this if you really are really still dealing with XP or something then yeah you go a lot further down okay all right idle timeout nothing specific over there session timeout all these are just literally completely blank all right okay so it's a PPP and service type framed nothing specific okay this is how it would look. IP filters, we'd not configure any over there. Encryption, remember, we gave it maximum, so that was there. IP settings, server settings, disturbing IP address assignment, that's fine. You also could assign static IP addresses if you wanted to from within here, that's fine, but we're giving it from our server, so that's there. Now, accounting is where it creates a log file and do be careful because if you're having lots and lots of users connecting etc it can get quite big so you might want to kind of like view it delete it after a while etc as long as there's no issues in there or make backups put them in a backup location somewhere like that you can use SQL server if you wanted to that's an option Okay, templates. You can create your own templates, um, like a shared secret template, which is nothing special. Okay, you just give a template name and you create your own little password or you generate and that's that. So when you're creating your radius server, radius client in the beginning, you wouldn't have to. Okay, so there's nothing really, really special. Okay. The main things that you are actually wanting to think about is actually these network policies. Our first policy that we set up over here is basically based on user groups. Okay, so if you're a part of a user group, you're allowed in. You may want to start adding more and more, like for example, based on IP. So just as an example, we'll go forward, give it a name. So another filter okay type of network it's the VPN click next okay click add and then you can go day and time client IP addresses authentication type and then all sorts of other options if you wanted to you know machine groups create all those and the more and more policies you have, they are cumulative, so they add on to each other. So they all must be met before access is granted. So just like I said in the beginning, this is a system that is similar to file and folders access permissions, okay, in NTFS. Um, hopefully this has helped. Uh, it has been a slightly long video, but... I'm sure you should benefit from it and have a great day and thank you for watching.